I'm going to assume that mostly I'm talking to people who are already anarchists and voluntarists. Uh, um, it doesn't matter if you're not. But we have a huge problem, which is that when you come to a conclusion that's based on logic and reason, and you reason things out, and then you turn around and you try to use the same logic and reason to get other people to listen to it, I suspect we've all experienced the thing where logic and reason don't work. Where people get emotional and they're scared and they freak out and they run away and they call you names and they predict the end of the world. And the biggest problem I see um, with uh, the movement, our mission, whatever the heck you want to call it, is that those who have come to the conclusion logically rarely understand enough about human psychology to actually be effective at getting other people to understand it. And the problem is, this is not like explaining to somebody how to, you know, tune up their engine or change their oil. This is literally a cult deprogramming. And you have to know more about psychology than you know about the philosophy. The philosophy and the concepts are ridiculously simple. I can do it in 10 seconds. I can't delegate a right I don't have. All of us together can't delegate a right that none of us have. Therefore, Congress has no rights that we don't have. The end. That's all the logic required. And there's other ways to explain it and approach it. The reason that doesn't work is we're not up against a contrary rational logical explanation. We're up against massive, intense indoctrination, usually starting before somebody can even talk, that they are subjected to by their parents and by their teachers, by the media, by the government, obviously, by all their friends and family who have been taught to believe the same thing. I used to, by analogy, say the belief in government is like a belief in a deity until I realized it isn't an analogy. It is a religious belief. The belief in government is the belief in a superhuman entity that has rights that we don't. It gives commandments that it calls laws. If you disobey, you're a sinner. You're a criminal. You're a lawbreaker. These ideas are indoctrinated into people's heads and you can't get them out by just explaining there's no such thing. And so to me, the, the, I've been an anarchist now for 20 years and I, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of, of statists I've talked to and I used to be one for many years um, and had all sorts of discussion, whether it's in person or online, one on one, one on a hundred, one on whatever. And I have learned far more about psychology and how weird and irrational the human mind is um, than I have about the philosophy. Because the philosophy is ridiculously simple for the most part. Um, and, you know, the, my favorite thing here is where people say, I, I love how you break it down until it's so simple you can't possibly deny it. Logically, you can't possibly deny it. Psychologically, lots of people do deny it because they have obstacles in their head that have nothing to do with reason, nothing to do with logic. Nobody on their own thought about things objectively and said, you know, here we have the society and we're getting along and stuff. We have a bunch of people interacting. What we really need is to take some people and give them permission to hurt the rest of us. Nobody would ever come up with that on their own. Nobody would reach that conclusion logically. The only reason they think that is because it's been pounded into their heads um, since before they could even talk. And to get them to look past their indoctrination and past their assumptions to be able to start to question it, we really do have to think like the people who specialize in cult deprogramming. We have to know the minefield of the human mind that makes people freak out and get emotional. I mean, by a show of hands, how many people here have had the experience of you try to explain it and somebody gets emotional or mad or scared and runs away? Everybody. We've all seen it. Now, if you were trying to explain a math equation to somebody, would they have any reason to go, no, that would never work, you're evil, you're horrible, I'm going to run away? No, they might go, I don't really understand what you're saying. The emotional reaction shows that what they are clinging to is an emotional, faith-based belief. It's not a logical conclusion they came to. It's a thing they were taught to accept on faith. And to try to get them to question something that they take on faith is very difficult and reason rarely does it. Once in a blue moon I'll, I'll meet somebody that just goes through the logic and goes, oh yeah, that makes sense. 
and lets go of the statism, in the vast majority of cases, 99% of the effort is getting past the psychology, and then the 1% is explaining the bleeding obvious, which they could have figured out on their own once you get, that, once you get past the psychology. Now, the, the huge project I'm working on called The Mirror, um, I think is the, the best thing I've ever heard of for navigating the minefield of, of human psychology in a way that I think won't set people off. However, since I don't want to just say, I'll just twiddle your thumbs for the next however many months or years until I finish that, I have my second favorite method for gently introducing people into the process of re-examining their own belief system. And that's something we have to be clear on. You cannot force anybody to understand something. You cannot force anybody to believe you, no matter how obvious and simple and logical it is. It's their choice, and, which is really annoying, because if someone chooses to believe something destructive and immoral and idiotic, especially if they're family and friends, I know how frustrating that can be, and I'm sure all of you know how frustrating that can be. But the harder you try to force it, the less you will accomplish. The best we can do, and it takes patience and it takes understanding of psychology, the best we can do is invite them to look inside their own brain. Now, one of the, the best tricks I've learned to do to make that happen is something I sort of stumbled across. Um, a, a few times I did events called uh, Escaping the Myth. Um, which was a, a two-day seminar event thing that happened in, in, in segments, and then I got it down to one day. But one particular part of it stuck out to me as very useful and interesting, and I refer to it as the, the island analogy. And so I'm basically going to give a, a short explanation of um, how I do this and how you can do it as a way to gently invite somebody to look at what they believe um, in short, it's a way to bring out the inner anarchist in anybody, to show to them they already are that. That is already what they believe. That is already what their value system and their moral code indicates. And that on top of that, there's this mangled belief thing that's kind of messing with it. But if they, if anybody feels, I mean, one of the main psychological hurdles if, is if somebody feels like, well, I have my belief system, and you have something different, and you're throwing at me, you're telling me about it, the natural instinct, whether it's rational or not, the natural instinct is I'm defensive. Because we believe different things and I'm on the defensive because you're trying to take away my beliefs, what I think of the world, what I think of right and wrong, what I think humanity is supposed to be. In short, what I think is good, because you disagree with it, you're telling me that what I think is good is really bad. And they, you know, rarely do they think of it that clearly and consciously, but instinctively they go on the defensive because they feel like you're attacking them. And in a sense, you are. But if you can make it, uh, you know, have it come across in such a way that it isn't at all telling them, you're an evil, horrible person, and I'm going to talk you into being good, because that doesn't ever work. But instead... You're a good person, but there may be things inside your head that are messing with your goodness. And, that, and so that's the approach the mirror takes. But the island analogy goes like this. 